I'm good, thanks. <laughs> so you're very one of the very fortunate individuals who uh, whose super booth is in your hometown, right? Yes, absolutely. This is a really, really good thing for us. <laughs> so um, looks like I see something here with an alpha sticker on it. That's quite a kind of uh, yes. a bold thing to have out in the world, <laughs> right? It's important for us because uh, as you as you guess on first sight when you look at this. This is an uh, emulation of the Sequential Circuits Prophet 1. You know, one of those monosynths of the olden times. And um, we're currently making a model of it. And it's not ready yet, so it's currently in alpha state. But we do something very interesting because on Monday, we are going to release the alpha to public as a freeware or as a research wear, wear as we call it. And why we do it is because you remember there's Diva, right? And Diva was really CPU expensive. That's because the filter takes that much CPU. And this time we want we give the people the option to try five different methods of calculating the filter. An easy one, not so easy ones, and really really CPU expensive ones and they can choose them. So here they are. Those are the five methods. And another. And another, and so on. And they seem to sound the same, but once you go into the extremes, vast differences, well vast I wouldn't say, but in the extremes you hear differences. And we do this firstly to, to tell people, yes, there are differences and there is a difference between... There is a price to pay. Yeah, there is a price to pay, it's called CPU. But also we want to know what is, what compromise can we, can we make? What's the... Will they, will they spot the most expensive one or... Ah, so you're not telling them which is which? No, we, we don't know ourselves. That's the, that's the point of it. It's a, it's a true, I think it's called ABX test or something. Um, we, we do not really know. I, I know some of it, but I don't know all of them. And um, we want to see how people discuss it. And we want to see which one they pick. We'll make a poll and people can say, hey, I, I like the, the cheapest one. And they will not know because they're all calculated at the same time. So you cannot see on the CPU what you've got there. So this is, this is one, of the, one of the points that we're doing. And then over the time, we're going to, we're going to model the whole thing. So you, you've got the familiar stuff. You've got oscillator A, oscillator B, you've got the mixer, uh, you've got the filter. What you currently, what we bring out on Monday is without this down here, so um, we will add a proper VCA envelope, the proper AFO, the proper modulation matrix. The Pro 1, the modulation matrix of the Pro 1 is amazing. It's unlike any of the other monosynths, and unlike, for instance, the Mini Moog, which, which has like a two octave range of modulation on the filter, the Pro 1 has 12 octaves. It's like 2,000 times the frequency range of, of the Minimoog's modulation range. And um, this makes the Pro 1, for, once, for one thing, a bigger challenge to model. And on the other hand, it's just such a much more versatile instrument. And we want to make it a true monophonic one, and we want to be true to the original. And that's the other point, we want to we want to have different calibrations because every single Pro One sounds different, yeah. and there are different. You know, the the uh, Curtis chips and they sound different. There, the ADSRs have huge differences, and some have little faults and stuff by now. And we want to model all of that and give users like a range of Pro Ones in one single plugin. Right, there is no gold master, is there? They're all no, yeah. no. That's and, an interesting yeah, idea. So, and, you know, last night I had a great chat with Dave Smith and we were talking about this and he seems to be, you know, he enjoys the idea and 
yeah, let's see where it goes. I mean, it's going to be the Pro 1. At some point later this year, we don't know when exactly, but we're in good spirits. That sounds really interesting. I mean, do you think that people are, uh, they're largely disconnected from the CPU? Hmm? Kind of, they're largely disconnected from the CPU aspect of a synthesizer software, aren't they? They're, people don't usually think about it until they go, oh, I've run out. I'm, yeah, well, I don't think so. I mean, many people, I mean, people always tell us they would love to use Diva, but um, uh, they can only play like four or five voices. So they can hard, you know, barely play a chord or something, right? So they are concerned with it. Uh, and this thing might use up more CPU because of the modulation range and, you know, to get proper sound quality, which is also a reason to make it monophonic in the first place, right? Ah, okay, so you stick with that, right. Yeah. And so also... What, so what, what is it that takes the most CPU? Is it the audio rate stuff? Is it the... It's, it's the filter, actually. Doing the filter properly is a, is a, is a big deal. I started a blog about it. Um, don't know... We haven't got a link yet on the homepage, but there's a blog about where we actually post our source code. And we want to educate people about um, why does it take so much CPU, and also we, we discuss this with other developers, and they have also great ideas. So we, we want to make this uh, get a better discussion about uh, analog modeling and all this stuff. So, do you think it would be better for just everybody to have? Unlimited CPU power. Then, you, if you didn't have to worry about optimization, would, would that, be great. that that would be? Yeah, it would be great. I mean, it's, uh, I would love to oversample this 32 times, but it's not going to happen. Uh, at least not for another five years or something. At the moment, it's oversampled eight times. And there's still some aliasing in it, and yeah, so it would be great. Urs, thank you very much. Thank you.